Paddling TV is brought to you by Ex Officio and their Soul Cool collection of shirts, which not only wick moisture from the body and dry quickly, but are made with ice fill technology. Ex Officio's Soul Cool shirts actually dissipate heat and provide a cooling effect. Check them out at exofficio.com. Flatwater canoes come in two basic sizes. Two-person tandem canoes are typically about 15 to 18 feet long, and solo canoes range in length from 14 to 16 feet. The length of the canoe will determine the speed that you'll be able to travel, and it also determines the amount of gear that you'll be able to take with you. As a general rule, the longer a canoe is, the faster it'll be and the less maneuverable it'll be. On the flip side, shorter canoes are easier to portage handle in windy conditions and load on your vehicle. For most tandem paddlers, it's hard to go wrong with a canoe around 16 feet in length. The nice thing about a 15 or 16 foot canoe is that it can serve as both a tandem and solo canoe when need be. The second major consideration when choosing a canoe is the material it's made of. Kevlar, carbon fiber and fiberglass canoes are all popular because they make strong, lightweight canoes that are great if you're going to be doing a lot of portaging. On the other hand, plastic canoes are much more durable, they're inexpensive, but you pay for it with their extra weight. You'll also sometimes see traditional canoes on the water, made from cedar strips, canvas, or even birch bark. These canoes are works of art and they require real care to keep in working order. Although they're beautiful boats to paddle, they're not very practical for most recreational canoeists. When picking out a canoe, it's important that you know how its shape affects the way it performs. You already know that longer boats tend to be faster and less maneuverable, but now let's take a look at the effect that the width and the shape of the canoe's hull has on its performance. When it comes to the width of the canoe, the wider it is, the more stable it is. The trade-off is that a wider canoe will be slower as it plows through more water. When you look at a canoe from bow to stern, you'll notice that the ends sit higher out of the water. This curvature of the hull is called rocker. The more rocker a canoe has, the easier it is to turn. And the less rocker a canoe has, the better it'll track or travel in a straight line, which is fantastic for cruising in calm conditions. When you're shopping for a canoe, you'll find that many are classified by the shape of the hull as viewed when looking down its length. Of course, each shape has its pros and its cons. Arched hulls like this one are well-rounded, which makes them fast, but they're less stable, so they're not the best beginner boats. Flat hulls might be a little bit slower, but they're more stable, which makes them great for paddling with kids, dogs, or going fishing. V hulls have a raised center line, which makes them track or go in a straighter line, which is good for beginner paddlers. The sides of canoes generally come in two different shapes. Flared hulls like this one broaden from the bottom up to the top, which helps keep your canoe dry in wavy conditions. Tumble hope canoes like this one narrow from the bottom up to the gunnel, which makes it easier for your paddle to reach the water because you don't have to reach out of the canoe quite as far. However, it can let waves splash in. Other common parts of the canoe include the gunnels, which are the wood, metal, or plastic pieces that wrap around the top of the hull. Wood gunnels feel great and look nice, but they require a lot more maintenance. You'll also find a yoke in most canoes, which is important to have if it's going to be carried by one person. Some canoes will have comfortable carved wooden yokes, and others will only have a simple bar. The thwarts are structural support bars that cross the canoe, and you'll sometimes find one in the bow and one in the stern. If you're going to be solo paddling a tandem canoe, it helps to have a thwart between the yoke and the stern seat, which you can use for support when you're kneeling. 